Hello everyone and welcome to my living room where today I have on the mannequin that beautiful natural form era dress that many of you complimented or commented on after watching the button video that I posted last Thursday. I usually have a hard time deciding what to do videos or posts on um, with the museum artifacts because I don't know what you all would like to see. I don't know what you're interested in, but with the interest that was shown in this dress, I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. This is an easy decision. So yeah, we're going to talk about this beautiful natural form era Polonaise style dress today. Um, thank you to my sweet friend, Brendan Miranda. I think two years ago, one and a half years ago, I don't know. Some years ago, we made a trade, and this was in a lot of several other dresses that he traded me for something, and I don't remember what it was. I think it was feathers. <laughs> anyway, I think I got the better deal, Brendan. You're not getting her back. Sorry. <laughs> um, I have a few wounded birds because I... I can't just give away or, or, or pass over a wounded bird from a long ago because a lot of the times the insides or the construction of them is so fascinating and so important to look at, especially if you are going to be making a reproduction or a dress for a costuming society or whatever. But this dress in front of you is not a wounded bird. She is in magnificent shape. I don't think she was worn more than one or two times because there's hardly any soiling at the hem and there's just a wee little bit of perspiration stain at her armpit. So I'm going to go up and turn her around so that you can um, get a far off look at her and then I'm going to do some close up video in here after I'm done with that. So let's see, I want to get her a little bit better situated. There we go. Okay, so she is a natural form era dress, and the natural form era that we have now come to call it came between the first and second bustle periods. I'm going to be showing pictures of the first bustle period somewhere up here, and then the second bustle era somewhere up here, so that you can see the differences between the two eras. There were some very distinct stylings and shape and form in the two eras that I don't really want to go into right now because we're talking about natural form. I'm going to, my memory is so bad when it comes to numbers, but I believe that the natural form era came about 1875, 1876, and then ended about 1883. And then that's when the bustle, second bustle came back into use. I don't know why we needed big butts, but we did. So natural form era, kind of how it sounds was had something to do with the natural form of the woman's body. In other words, in the previous fashion eras, like the hoop skirt era, you had the hoops, the big cage crinolines that were under them. And then that first bustle, you had still a little bit of the hoop, but then you had the bustle in the back. And then the second bustle era, you had another bustle in the back. I believe sometimes, and I, I've done some research, I'm gonna try and find that and share it with you. Sometimes there was a little tiny crinoline under the skirt to help hold it out. I don't know why, because they had petticoats. Maybe they didn't want petticoats around their ankles. I don't know. But also, sometimes they had a wee little tiny bustle back here just to help fill in that. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> but that little hollow back here just to give it a little bit of a better silhouette. Our girl, I'm going to call her Rose. I don't know why I need to name my things. She is made out of cotton. She is a really soft cotton, like very soft to the touch. And the print on the fabric is, when I first saw it, when Brendan sent me pictures of it, I thought they were apple blossoms, but they're not, they're roses, like a wild rose. So I'll show a close up of that. But when I say Polonaise, it is a style of, of bodice and a lot of times this style of dress and even in the bustle eras you had an underskirt an overskirt which had drapings and bustling in the back and then you have the bodice well on this dress and what i will do is after i'm done with this i'll take um, her top off so that you can see the just the skirt and then i'll put the top back on without the skirt so you can see what i'm talking about 
but the Polonaise has these draped pannier type things on the sides. It was just a style, it was very lovely. So you have the front part that looks kind of like a vest, and then you have these long drapings on the side. Again, right here. And then in the back, right here, it looks like it ends, the bodice ends with these cute little tails in the back, but it doesn't. It has this bustling in the back. And the undersides are really cool because how they made it hold together was they had these, they either had um, ties or tapes, ribbons, or in, in this instance, we have elastic. So I will show that to you as well because the inside is so lovely. And like I said, she's amazing. The condition that she is in, like I said, I don't, you can see I'm five, six, five, five and three quarters, but I'm lazy. I'm five, six. And, oh, hello, sorry, darling. Sorry, Rose, there we go. So you can see how petite she was. So she may have been for a very young lady, a super petite lady, or I don't know. She's just gorgeous. All right, I'll be back to show you the separate pieces. 